I'm Sean, and welcome to Spell Slingers, the show where I play Magic the Gathering with my nerd friends. And said friend today is none other than Allie Brosh from Hyperbole and a Half Fame. I'm Allie Brosh, and I write stories and illustrate them with shitty MS Paint drawings. She's kind of a committed, goofy person. So I think we're gonna get along very well. Well, I actually understand you play quite a bit of magic. I do. I think I was in fifth grade, I was 10. Uh, my three best friends played magic and they got me into it after school. I would say my magic is my main non-writing hobby. I can sink 17 hours into drafting online. Magic has just sort of always stuck with me. I took some years off from it, but it was always there. So, you know, in, in those drafts, you can always talk about the draw not going your way. And here, you can talk about the deck you receive not going your way. The entire deck. But I know, being the tryhard that you are. Yes, and, and that is entirely accurate. I try really hard to be good. Uh, I'm not quite there yet. Would you like to spin the wheel of fates first or second? Hell yeah, oh, I'll, spin, I'll spin it uh, first. <laughs> just I wanna... First or second, yes. <laughs> <laughs> if I just, anything involving the wheel, I, right now. Oh, I, like, this is what I've been looking forward ready. to. I'm really excited for this. Can you even reach that? Not naturally, not from the position that I'm in. <laughs> well, let me do something totally impromptu and not set up beforehand at all. <laughs> I have an implement of wheel spinning. I'm just gonna have to knock it. <laughs> Does that count? Here, Allie, I want you to beat the wheel to death with a disembodied arm. Here, hit the thing again. It needs to go all the way around at least once. Ah! All right. Oh! Sweet. I was pretty happy with that. I mean, I like, I like red blue. Uh, I, I like blue. A lot of people don't, but uh, I, I like it. Please, if I can steal the arm. Let me just hand this to you. Now, oh wait, one, one, one thing I want to note. Um, to be cool, blue and red, it's called is it. Is it? Is it. Is it though? It is. I like to play tempo decks. I like decks that try to get a little tricky and, and they, can, they can be aggressive, but they also have some way to interact with the opponent. I find that this just looks <laughs> so funny. Like if, if this was like, like a, the hair of a beautiful woman, I'd want to like. <laughs> <laughs> caress it with the back of it. Just like starting <laughs> through. Okay, here we go. Hit you in the head. <laughs> oh. yeah, that was really close. Oh. We're gonna have to get like an instant replay on that. I know, okay, wait. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I'm Azorius. <laughs> Sound really excited about that. Normally, the reason that I'm not a big fan of blue is obviously playing against it, but playing as blue, it's a lot about delay, 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 delay. But with blue white, I like the tempo feel where I'm getting some dudes out, and especially given how many flyers and evasion creatures there are. I think it'll actually be a pretty fast match. I think it'll be kind of a race. So I will be playing the white-blue deck. And I will be playing the blue-red deck. Y you have to know that I despise blue. I like blue. Why do you like blue? It just feels nice to be able to cast things at instant speed, and it, I like the I like counterspells. I'm sort of a dick. Monster. <laughs> you're gonna be like counterspell. Be like counterspell. But it's sort of fun, like that moment where you like counter the counter. You're just sort of like, like in it. Or in construct when there's just like the stack, yeah, the stack. is like ten. I, I think that's why I, I like interacting on the stack. That's fun. So without any further ado, I want you to hold your hand up like this, and on the count of three, we're going to snap our fingers with okay. incredible coordination. Okay. Okay, so it's gonna be one, two, three, snap. Okay. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was way faster. Uh, okay, wait, wait, I, I didn't hear the noise. We're gonna do it again, we're gonna do it again. Wait, can you just do a, a normal snap noise? Okay, that was good, here we go. One, two, three. Would you look at that, the deck? Well, I will look at that. I wanna, I actually oh, wanna can, find out what these are. Look. So if my understanding of my deck is correct, I want to be getting some sort of damage dealer out there early and just pecking away all game long. Would you like to go first? Yes. All right, here we go. Now, in the break, while we were taking an opportunity to look at our decks, I found that mine's a very evasion-focused deck, has a lot of flyers, a lot of unblockables. We also looked up in a dictionary the word ensorcel. We started at looking up ensoul. Oh, that's and right. And ensorcel was just sort of like one of those like auxiliary words yeah, sort of as, in the margins. As you're typing in, it's like narrowing down all the words that begin <laughs> like E-S-S-O-R. -S like you, you want to know what the word ensoul means. You might also want to know what the word <laughs> yeah. ensorcel means. Like on our recommendation engine, it's like other words you might like to use today. Ah! God, that was so embarrassing. Let me tell you, if you ever go to like an official magic event, like a uh, Grand Prix or even a Friday Night Magic, if you drop your card. That's just like 
you tilt look, right you there. You look so dumb. You just look like a toddler in a high chair, like dropping your biscuits or whatever it's, it's kids like a, eat. I don't know what they eat. <laughs> <laughs> Eating a child biscuits? Oh, either way, it's bad. It's like when a freshman's like, oh yeah, I'd like ice in my beer. And everyone's like, oh man, no. I didn't know exactly what the theme was going to be. I, it, the fact that it was an artifact-based deck was surprising to me. I'm going to debate as to whether... Yeah. Oh wait, no, you, you, you're first mulligan, I'm sorry. So when I, when I looked at my first hand, um, I was pretty on the fence about whether I should mulligan or not. Uh, I only had two lands, but I had some stuff I could do, so I decided to keep it. I will keep. I feel like I'm making a big risk by keeping this. I want to get a hand that has some way to get a dude out to, you know, be the, the premier pecker. I, I got a mulligan. I got a mulligan. <laughs> All right, that's fine. That's fine. No, I'm, I accept my mulligan. I regret well, nothing. I'm, I'm going to look really silly when my... When my decision to not mulligan doesn't work out for me. That's the best part, is that because of the draw, it means that you can always convince yourself of what you need to be right. Sean just mulliganed, and I'm, I'm, I'm sort of pleased with that because my hand's not very strong, and if I have a fighting chance in this game, I know he's, I'm gonna need him to not come out of the gates real strong. <laughs> Did you make a bad decision, Sean? No! <laughs> I'm gonna keep it. So when you mulligan from seven to six, there's not a really big loss in win percentage, but going from six to five is huge. So I had two land, didn't really want to go to five. All right, may I go? Good luck, have fun. You as well. I don't know why I turned to the camera. But <laughs> we wish each other luck. <laughs> we are yeah. being good sportsmen. And Allie's camera too. Mm. <laughs> so now that we have thoroughly established that we wish each other luck. That this is an amiable match. Yeah, an amiable, n in no way competitive. I'm gonna make my first play. Mountain. Go. An island. I pass the turn to you. Play an island. I'm going to play Sacred Armory. Now this is an artifact Ooh. that I can tap two mana to give target creature a plus one, plus zero. If you're real nice to me, I might use it on your creatures. Oh my God, thank you so much. Being very generous. You have, you have to be up. really nice to me though. And I pass the turn to All you. right, here we go. We are drawing. I want you to know that I, I drew something beautiful. Hopefully you get to play it so I can see it. Well, uh, it really depends on my upcoming draws. Because as I'm gonna take that to mean that you don't have very many lands. No, nah, it's noob. Noob. Mm. Ugh. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna play an Oreskus uh, Swift Claw. He is a, yeah. amazingly a 3-1 in white. I'm gonna pass the turn to you. I'm going to tap three mana. Play a Rummaging Goblin. Looting, there's a card called Merfolk Looter. And you could tap it to draw a card, then discard a card. And then later in Magic, I feel like this was in the last couple of years, um, they decided to move that ability into red. And the way that they did that was make you discard a card first to represent chaos, and then you get to draw the card. Ooh. Now I can tap that to discard a card and draw a card. But he is summoning six, so I cannot do that. And then I will pass the turn to you. <sighs> You know, this play, I get to say that I'm doing this just for the show. Because if it doesn't go well, it's just for entertainment value. Given that Allie hasn't played anything except the Rummaging Goblin that can really be a threat, I feel like she is hunting for something. She's missing either land or she's missing an aggressive card. So I'm happy to bounce it, even though it's not a really big threatening creature. So I'm going to cast Void Snare to bounce your Rummaging Goblin. Oh. So I, so I have a Rummaging Goblin in play. It's and just... It returns target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. Then he oh. void snares it. And uh, sort of like dismantles my plan right there. And I declare the attack. <sighs> Indeed. And I have no choice but to take three. Yes. Going to 17. And I believe that ends my turn. Isn't this amazing that we started out? We're like all talkative and cheery and the game begins, we're just like. Yeah, we're just like, oh. <laughs> I'm like totally in strategy mode. I'm in the tank a little bit here. When you're playing a game that has a lot of strategy, sometimes you journey to a magical place called the tank. It is not a place of wonderful rainbows and fuzzy creatures, but it's a place with like whiteboards, dry erase markers. You can do some maths and computation and figure out with all the possibilities you have, what's the one you want to do. You like to spend a little bit of time in the tank. At this point in time, I'm, uh, Really just looking to get in some early damage, because that seems to be the theme of this deck, is just trying to get the tempo in. Okay, so I'm going to tap three of my mountains and play out the Rummaging Goblin again, which is no surprise, you already knew I had that. Okay. And I'll pass the turn. 
There, I, I hope it's a land. Well, look at that. Well, when you have a shirt like this, you either lose track of your train of thought or you try again. So like I was taking that as like, because it's facing me. Yeah. It's saying, may I draw well? I never <laughs> thought of shirts like that. Well, I mean, like if you have a shirt that says, have a nice day, it's not like ha me have a nice day, it's you have I, a nice that's day. That's how I totally viewed my shirts. I would look at it and be like, nice. And then I'd like <laughs> put it on and wear that warmth and stuff. Yeah, you're projecting that to your opponents. Yeah, well, I and mean. May you draw well. I hope, I mean, I hope you draw well, but I hope you don't draw like as well. As well as you. As this. Look at all, look at all these planes. <laughs> mm. Well, I have an equal enough number of mountains. Ooh, what do we got here? We got, is we got it, charging dive bombing griffin or whatever, yeah. razor foot griffin. A flying flying first, first strike. strike, first strike, man. There oh. you go. Oh yeah, I likes it. So I will pass through the combat phase, and in main two, I will play this, and I will pass the turn to you. Thank you very much. I'm very, I'm very generous. <laughs> okay, this this is gonna get real scary. It looks it looks sort of non-threatening. Looks like, eh, it looks I don't really care what that does. Yeah, it's totally how I feel. You hit but it, I'm hit going it on to the head. Play it, scrapyard mongrel. Ooh. He is a 3-3, three, three, but if I control an artifact, which I do, he gets plus two, plus zero. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Oops, sorry. He's sort of a scary little guy. Uh, and I'm going to pass the turn. Okay. This is where I become real not interesting, because I need to just stew. I need to go into the tank. Okay. I'm going to just stare at you uncomfortably the entire time. Just okay. know that. So I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do. Let me, let me walk through my thought process so I don't necessarily want to attack with this fellow because it would be a great thing to block that 3-3 three, three with. Um, I'm trying to think if I want to do anything. Okay, I'm declaring attack. I'm sending in the attack. And I will do nothing. Ah. <laughs> All right, uh, so you receive damage. I receive damage, and, and I that's will, two damage, and I go to 15. Yeah, I will play Military Intelligence, which is an enchantment that reads when you attack with two or more creatures draw a card, and I. I uh, anyway, I and on your on your end step, I'm going to activate the raid rummaging goblin by tapping it and discarding a card. Hmm. Ooh, wait! I want to see this. That's a tyrant's machine. Tap target creature. Hmm. So, I mean, that's pretty good, but it's a. Oh, I, yeah. I feel like I'm gonna get stuck on mana. So then it's now my turn. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to play an island. All right, I like it. Love it. Then I'm immediately going to use that island and one of my mountains. Uh oh. To cast End Soul Artifact. Okay, wait. On my artifact. What does this do? Enchant Artifact. Enchant Artifact is a creature with base power and toughness 5 5 in addition to its other types. So I've got a 5 5 now. I'm feeling pretty good at this point in the game. Um, I have just made a 5 5 way earlier than I would normally get to make a 5 5 by making my artifact into one. This should be an amazing play for her because she has two cards that have synergy with the artifact. But I happen to have the perfect situational card. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and just swing in with that bad boy. Okay. Declare so, no blocks. Yeah. All right, damage. Ugh. Okay, so now it is my, so now that damage is resolved, it is my second main phase. And I'm going to play Aeronaut Tinkerer. Aeronaut Tinkerer. So that's that's pretty good. I put seven power of creatures onto the board in one turn. Because Aeronaut Tinkerer has flying as long as you control an artifact. Okay. Which I do. Bang. That is also a creature now. Of course. I've had Solemn Offering in my hand for a while. Now I have the perfect use for it. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I've been looking through the windows of the buffet, and I found an open door. And as you know, whenever I'm nearby a buffet, I pack my body to capacity. I think first I'm gonna cast the Solemn Offering, which destroys target artifact. Oh, artifact. goodness. My plan just got a lot worse. Oh, thank God. I thought you were gonna be like, well, goodness, I have this zero mana counter spell. I'm like, Gavin, Gavin, <laughs> meet your decks. Okay, cool. So I gain four life. Oh, and you just, you undid almost everything I did with it too. That's, uh -huh. that's disheartening. I will poke again. Poke for two. See, that, that was just brutal. You took away my five five, huh. and now my thing doesn't have flying anymore. But yeah, I'll take two. And go to 13. Okay, I'm, turn I'm not gonna thin. rummage, because I wanna keep my cards in my hand. I don't wanna play the Goblin Lottery. The Goblin Lottery is when you throw away a card and hope that you're drawing a better card. So I am gonna go and, hmm. so go to attacks and declare attackers. I'm attacking with both of, both of these fine gentlemen or ladies. Well, I think I'm going to block God, what do you have? What do you have up your sleeve? Do you have like one of those red buffs that gives you first strike? 
Because I know you play online. <laughs> you don't have to control tails. You can be like, boom, first strike, and do all that. Look, here, I'm going to block here. I have to. If you've got it, you got it. It happens. It... Oh, it's just a trade? It's just a trade. Oh. <sighs> well, I, I, right. I have another one. Oh, crap. And uh, I pass the turn to you. First, I'm going to attack this guy's. Yep. Go okay. to 11. I am then going to play a Nimbus of the Isles. Oh my. It's just a 3-3 three, three with flying. So I have a pretty clear plan. Get two flyers out and attack with them so I can keep activating my card draw enchantment. You say that so so innocently. It's just a 3-3 three, three with, three, three with flying. It's just a little 3-3. Hope three, three. will interact and let me draw all the cards. Yeah. Gobbling up all the cards. <laughs> scooping them towards me like pastries. Mm. <laughs> Is that make, what you do with pastries? Oh, yes, of that's, course. That's the standard interaction with pastries? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, like, I'm like when the greedy pirate finally gets to the chest of gold. I'm like, <laughs> and then I just, I, I don't even go for the plate. I just like put my mouth at the edge you of the table. Just sort of like wedge it in your and elbows <laughs> and like eat it. Get as much leverage in there and I'm just like crying. I'm like so happy. Uh, and pass the turn to you. All right. And that's a 3-3 three, three and a 2-3, okay. I'm torn here. Uh, between mana efficiency and keeping a trick up my sleeve. Pfft. When you've got a 3-3. Three, three. I think I'm gonna go with the trick. Depends. <laughs> you trying to intimidate me again? No, I, no, 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 no. No, I just, you know, I, I just can't, I, I sat back like right before we started shooting and I was just like, all right. It's a good sound. I was, yeah, I was like very self -aware. And you have to move around like more just so, so that it's clear to me that it wasn't you farting. <laughs> well, the problem is I have to be careful because now if, if it's been confirmed as not a fart, you might just think that the chair is buckling under the weight of my <laughs> pastry loving body. So new plan, get Sean to 10 life and then burn him out. All right, I'm going to go to attacks and attack with everything. I know she's thinking something because she's an experienced magic player, but I don't know what it is. They're all coming directly at your face. Wait, I want to make sure there's nothing else that I'm missing here. <laughs> this is just, this is just a potentially flying guy, so. It's just, yeah, so he's, he's attacking. <laughs> well, okay, I don't actually have anything to debate. I have no mana. It's do I think you have a combat trick or not? That's it. That's yeah. all I'm thinking. I blocked the 2 3 with the you 3 3. The two, three. Okay, okay. Well, and you take four. Oh, oh my god, oh my god, you totally mind gamed. So she attacks with everything and just gives a card up. And I mean, my plan's really clear. I'm just gonna be swinging in the skies, but she's slowly losing presence on the board. There's no combat trick. Can you pick this card up for me? Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Okay, so I take four, I'm gonna go from 17 to 13. Yeah. So you're, all, you're at 11, okay. And I'll pass to you. Pass. Um, declaring an attack. Yeah. Send in the attack. Yep, I go to six. Okay, and I will draw a card from the enchantment that triggers whenever I attack with two or more creatures. I'm gonna play the wall of frost now. Ah, oh, that was not a, that was not what I wanted to see. Sort of put the whole game plan here. And I pass the turn to you. So I'm getting suspicious, cause like, you've had three cards in hand, and unless you just have like a lot of land, I was I was had a debate between mana efficiency and the surprise factor, and I chose surprise oh. factor oh. over oh. mana efficiency, and now it's coming back to bite me. It's, yeah, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm feeling I'm just overcome, awash, <laughs> ensouled with regret. <laughs> You're ensorcelled with regret. Ensorcelled. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so something's gonna happen. Something's gonna happen. Something happen. is occurring soon. I'm going to tap four land and play juggernaut. So uh, so I played a juggernaut. And it can't be blocked by walls. Sean's got a wall, so the chances are good it's gonna get through and get him to the life total I need to burn him out. It's also an artifact so to, that I can sacrifice a shrapnel blast. And then I am going to pass to you. Okay. So I have the game won unless Ali has some miracle way to kill me when I'm at 13 health, which there's no way, there's no way she should be able to do that. I'm gonna attack with these two. Both of them, okay. All right. Yep. Which lets me draw a card. And then in main two, I'm gonna cast Chrono Stutter, which says put target creature oh. second to the top. So Sean Chrono Stuttered my Juggernaut. Unfortunately, the Juggernaut was the thing that was gonna get him to 10. And now I don't have it. Oh no. Okay, so in response. Oh no. I am going to um, Shrapnel Blast you for five damage, which this means says... I sacrifice an artifact. So I'm gonna sacrifice this. Okay. And deal five damage directly to your face. Okay, five damage, so I go from 13 to eight. Pass the turn. Okay. Skin, 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 
scary. I'm going to discard a card and draw a card. Okay. I'm going to attack. All right, I will block with the wall. Yes, that occurs. <laughs> All right. And then second main, I'm going to Lava Axe you. What's Lava Axe do? I feel like at 13 health, there's no way that she can blow me out in one turn. And then she deals 10 damage. So I go to three. And then I think about the Juggernaut that she could have played that a turn earlier. I got him to three life. So close. See, that's, so that's what I was trying to do oh with the... Oh my You see what I was doing with the Juggernaut? Do you oh see what I was God, doing? Oh my God, I would have died! You, that's, that's what I'm talking about, the surprise factor. And then I realize that I am a very lucky boy. I'm down to three health. That should have been negative two health. So that's all I can do, unfortunately, or is it? I will draw my card. I will not play my card, and then I will attack. And swing in the air for the win. And I will fall. Ah, I got I got rather fortunate. You did. Yeah. Oh <laughs> all right. Yeah. I, I still think this this is this has been a fun game though. This was a good a good interactive back and forth. I I en I enjoyed it quite thoroughly. It, it has been a pleasure magicking with you. It was close. Uh, didn't get there, but it was close. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Spell Slingers, in which I won by the skin of my teeth, the teensiest, tinsiest of margins, ever so slight. But thus is the joy of magic. You have no idea what's going to happen, especially if you have a Wheel of Fate and two decks you've never seen before. Go forth and draw well, my friend.